Anderson Cooper can't save everybody in America. What's that all about? Well, a recent 60 minutes episode talked about the Social Security Administration and specifically how they address overpayments, people's overpayments. So let's talk about that today. Um, Anderson said they reached out to the Social Security Administration and they got no official response at that particular time. Um, so I like to give a an unofficial response from a former manager of the Social Security Administration. My name is Ed Weir. I ran the third busiest Social Security office in the country. Uh, worked for Social Security for close to a couple decades and helped out hundreds of thousands of people with all things Social Security. And if you uh, subscribe to my channel, um, check the like button and all that kind of good stuff, hopefully we can help you out, make sure you get everything you're entitled to. And in my kind of semi-retirement, I'm also helping people with all things uh, Medicare, um, A, B, C, D, Medicare supplements, the Affordable Care Act and all the rest of it. So if you need any help, uh, reach out to us. Okay. All right. Um, I'm kind of new to this whole YouTube thing. So the whole fair use copyright issue, I'm not even going to mess with it. I don't want my channel to be deleted. Um, so I'm not going to show you the video, but I am going to play it uh, right here beside me and I am going to comment um, so I'll explain what they're talking about, and then I will comment an official comment by a former Social Security employee um, on Anderson Cooper's story. People say I look like Anderson Cooper, but on, other than the fact that you know he's good looking and has his hair and comes from an incredibly rich and famous family, but other than that, we look exactly alike. Anyway, uh, Anderson, if you're watching, um, awesome job. Um, so please share my video and so you can get the unofficial response. And if you can give me permission to use your video, I'd be more than happy to overlay it in this one so people won't be as confused. But anyway, all right, let's start. So first of all, they mentioned in the, uh, the episode that Social Security mistakes are your responsibility. That is 100% the fact. So if Social Security, for whatever reason, you uh, they do an incorrect calculation or they pay it to you and they send it to the wrong address same wrong bank account and it should be going to someone else you were receiving early retirement and you worked too much you were receiving disability and you worked too much whatever the case may be um you are ultimately responsible for that overpayment to repay that overpayment as they call in the episode clawback uh, don't really call that and that don't you really term that we call it kind of recovery or, you know, repayment um, of the overpayment. But anyway, um, so what two things have to be met for a waiver to take process to start the process of waiver and a waiver is basically you're asking the Social Security Administration, OK, I have an overpayment, but can you waive it? And you need an SSA 632. I'm going to be doing a video. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos over the next few months. Um, and one of them is I'm going to go through all the forms like a 632 and a 561 and the SSA 44 and the SS5 and all these. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. Yes, I'm sorry that I still remember all these forms. Um, but I'm going to go through a bunch of those forms and I'll put them up on the screen and I'll say, OK, in this particular block, do this and this will block do this. And so uh, to make it easy for everybody to fill out the forms. But in this particular case, it is an SSA 632 request for a waiver. So when you get overpaid by Social Security Administration, I did another video, one of the very first videos I did when I started my journey several months ago. Um, but when you, you get overpaid, you can request a waiver of that overpayment. So you're basically saying, telling Social Security that, uh, OK, uh, I got overpaid, you know, your fault, my fault, whatever. Um, can you waive it? Can you delete it, negate it, act like it never happened? Um, and so you have to fill out that SSA 632 and two things have to be met. Two things have to be met. It's not your fault and you don't have the ability to repay it. Okay. So the not your fault thing, that's kind of what the story is talking about. Um, the episode, the 60 minutes episode. In this particular case, um, they recount um, a few cases of people receiving disability benefits. And this person received disability benefits and in order to be disabled in for social security is it's the inability to work 
and substantial gainful activity, you can work a little bit and receive disability benefits. I've got another video on that. Um, but the inability to work and your disability has to last 12 months or longer, or as we say, in the death. So some people, you know, they, you know, you know um, get cancer and they say, well, it, you know, when they go into file for disability benefits, you know, the, the employee asks, okay, uh, what's your disability? Okay. It, you know, cancer, um, uh, will it last 12 months or longer? And if it's, you know, advanced cancer stage four or something, and they say, well, you know, the doctor gave me, you know, seven months. Um, so that's not an automatically denial because the end in death, um, part of the policy, um, applies there. Okay. So that's what that part means. So, um, the person in the story was receiving disability benefits, um, was in a hospital for a long time, got out of the hospital, um, finally recovered and, you know, living on disability alone, it's not a lot of money. Um, so that person went back to work, which is fine. You can go back to work and receive disability benefits, but you have to limit your income. Okay. So, and there are strict guidelines for restricting your income, reducing your income to to work and collect disability benefits. And it is extremely, extremely complicated. There are trial work periods. You basically have like a nine month period where you can, you know, work as much as you want because social security inevitably, you know, they, they want you to go back to work, you know, get off the disability, you know, go back to work. You make more money that way. It, you know, saves the, the, the disability trust fund and all the rest of it. So they would like for you to go back to work. So they give people an opportunity to try work, try a work period. So it's asked, it's, it lasts for nine months. Um, give you a kind of a gray area there a month or two. So you can make a million dollars a month for that nine months. And at the end of that nine months or so in a month or two gray area, you say, oh, now I tried it. It just, no, I just, I, I just can't do it. I, you know, I tried, you know, six, seven, eight, nine months and I just can't do it. So stop work or reduce your work as, to under substantial gainful activity, as they call it under a limit. And you continue to get your disability benefits. If you, at the end of that eight or nine months, you say, well, yeah, it looks like I can work. You just call up social security administration and stop your benefits. That way you can avoid that overpayment. So um, you have the trial work period. And then you also have this thing called extended period, period, extended period of eligibility, EPE, um, which is a 36 month period where sometimes you can work on and off and it's, it's all very complicated. Um, there is a organization that social security uses called a ticket to work. Um, so if you're disabled and you're thinking about going back to work, I would highly, highly, highly recommend reaching out to the ticket to work people also reaching out to, um, call your office, the local social security office and ask for the AWIC, the area work incentives coordinator. So not every office has one, but every area has one. Um, and they are supposedly hopefully, um, specialists in this particular part of the trial work period and extended period of eligibility and all the different uh, permutations of working and receiving disability benefits. It's all very complicated. Um, and that's one of the reasons so many people get overpaid um, when they shouldn't. And the fact, as in this particular story with Anderson Cooper, um, Social Security takes forever to do anything. So um, the, the people in the story got overpaid um, because he was working, he went back to work and she sent in the documentation, his, um, his proof of how much he was making. And so they reported it, but social security, you know, uh, the bureaucracy and the system. And then because all of that, that part of that is so complicated, um, it gets missed. It gets overlooked. It doesn't, it doesn't get addressed correctly. It definitely doesn't get addressed timely. You know, as, as uh, the, the lady in the story pointed out, you know, I could see, you know, four or five months, you know, it takes four or five months. Okay. I report the earnings. We went over um, four or five months, uh, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. I finally took his time. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're going to stop your benefits, but they were receiving benefits for years. 
And now they have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, maybe like 40 or $50,000 of an overpayment. That should never, 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 never happen, obviously. So um, they get overpaid and Social Security just takes too long to address the issue. And, you know, $2,000, $3,000 overpayment turns into $10,000 overpayment, a $50,000 overpayment. And unfortunately for, the, uh, for this couple, she, she said she just, they just didn't waive it. They, they will send, because Social Security will send you, eventually they will send you an overpayment letter. And it's, you know, I get calls all the time from people, I just received this letter. And, and I'd say, well, number one, don't panic. You know, yes, on the letter it says, you know, cut us a check for $147,000 today, and which I'm sure everybody out there has just sitting around in their bank account. Um, but don't worry about that. Um, what you do then, again, is uh, fill out the SSA 632, the request for waiver. Um, one of the first things you, you can also do at the same time, uh, fill out an SSA 561. SSA 561 um, is a request for reconsideration. So you're basically reconsider. You say, okay, well, reconsider the entire thing. Uh, I don't think it's an overpayment because I stayed under this amount, or I didn't work, or I, you know, that's no. Um, so the 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 overlap between the SSA 561, the request for reconsideration, and the SSA 632, the request for a waiver. Um, even some so a lot of Social Security employees don't know the difference between those two, but. Uh, Long story short, file both of them at the same time. You can file both of them at the same time. So in order to get it waived, if they consider it, if they say, okay, yes, it is a valid overpayment. So the request for reconsideration that it's not a valid overpayment, they denied that. And anytime you get anything, a decision by the Social Security Administration, and you don't, you know, you say, no, that's not incorrect, you can always file an appeal. So if you get that file an appeal and it goes to the next level, and then eventually it goes to the administrative law judge, a, a, a social security judge, and they have a lot more latitude um, to make determinations. You know, social security employees, um, you know, say, yeah, I wish I, you know, I used to say this all the time. I wish I could, you know, uh, uh, waive this, but I just, you know, I have to follow policy. I mean, the, the specific wording of the policy, and I just can't do it. But a judge has a lot more latitude, a lot more freedom. So request an appeal. And eventually you'll get your uh, your day in front of judge. But again, that takes forever too, which is a whole nother issue. I did a video on uh, um, um, the, the worst places in the country to be disabled, the 10 slowest um, places where you get your disability uh, decided. And it's, yeah, it's years. So it's, yeah, that's unacceptable. Another thing, unacceptable. There's many unacceptable things. Um, Social Security employees are doing an awesome job with what they have, their staffing. Um, the, the story Anderson Cooper did points out the, um, the staffing has gone down considerably. Um, I re I took an early retirement. I just retired a couple of years ago and it looks like I'm, you know, 70 years old, but don't comment, please. Um, actually I'm under 60 and I retired at what, 58 years old, um, because there was early retirement. I decided I wanted to go do something else. And I uh, says, so, yeah, I raised my hand and say, yeah, I'll take an early retirement. And then probably about a week after I retired, I got contacted by Social Security Administration. They said, uh, yeah, I think we let too many people go. Do you want to come back? And by that time, I'd already gone out with my life and uh, yeah, started doing crazy things like what I'm doing here today. Um, so yeah, staffing is, is just, just terrible. And even if they were to hire 10,000 people today, it wouldn't affect anything for a couple of years, a year or two, because it takes that long to train um, a Social Security employee. Again, the, I talked about this in another video, the policy that they use to you know, adjudicate any type of decision like this is called POMS, and it's over 20,000 pages. So many months of training. And so even if they hired 10,000 people today, you know, it wouldn't make a difference. It would actually make things worse, possibly, um, for a while, because people in that office would have to train and review the cases of the new employees, which would take away. So, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's an unfortunate situation. Um, I've got many personal beliefs on why that is. Um, 
let's just say Wall Street is chomping at the bit, wanting to get in hold of the trust fund, the Social Security trust fund, so they can you know do their golden parachutes and bet, take it to Vegas and uh, gamble with your retirement and take their their crazy commissions. So one of the ways they convince you is this, they deteriorate customer service and you know so you lose trust in Social Security and you just say ah oh, forget about it you know just give it to these you know guys in Wall Street and let's see if they can do better. And guess what? So, but that's my own personal belief. But anyway, all right. So um, if you do have that overpayment, again, you have to jump over two hurdles. That is, it's not your fault and you don't have the ability to repay. So make the case. It's not your fault. You know, you sent in your proofs. Uh, you sent in your, uh, um, your you know, kind of work st uh, uh, stubs that how much you got paid and that you're over. And so you were telling social security, Hey, you know, this is how much I'm making. So you should stop my benefits and social security will come back and say, okay, yeah, it takes us a while. So actually you should have never cashed those checks. You sure we overpaid you, but you should, you should have known that you can't make over X amount of money and that, you know, therefore, you know, you should have never cashed that check. You should have never used that money. You should have just left it in there. Um, but that's, you know, come on, that's unrealistic. You know, people got money in their bank account and they need to pay the rent and, you know, buy food and insurance and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, you know, they're going to use it. Um, and social security at the same time, which is, it's a terrible system, um, is that they also send a letter. Well, they send a letter to this couple that said, Okay, yeah, we see that you worked more last year. And because you worked more last year, we're going to increase your PIA, your primary insurance amount. Because again, Social Security determines how much you will get paid by your high 35 years of earnings. So this person worked, you know, X amount of years. And while they were disabled, they worked another year. So that person's benefit amount actually increased. So Social Security said, congratulations, you worked. And therefore, we're going to increase your benefit amount. And so this poor couple were looking at this and say, wow, you know, okay, I guess Social Security knows how much we're making. They even, you know, nice enough to increase our benefit amount. So everything's hunky dory, and no issues. And then several years later, they get a bill for, you know, what, like $50,000 or something. So it, that makes no sense whatsoever on why they send out that letter and don't bring it to people's attention better that okay yes your benefit amount your is increasing but that doesn't necessarily you know um mean that you're getting your benefits correctly we're just saying that because you worked you paid more into the system we're going to increase your benefit amount so but that's confusing that's obviously confusing i've talked to you know thousands of people that were confused by that that particular letter so they need to do something about that. All right. So um, they have determined it's your fault for cashing the checks, I guess, um, and inability to repay, to do the waiver. Okay. So the inability to repay. How you do that is you, with the 632, the SSA 632, you take all of your, um, you know, your uh, costs, your, you know, rent, mortgage, uh, how much you pay for food, how much you pay for car insurance, how much you pay for your car and all this kind of stuff. And you have to go down there and show them says, okay, after all my living expenses, I have, you know, $47 and 37 cents left over. So I have a $50,000 overpayment, but all I have is $47 left. And there's no blood in that turnip. Um, so you have to provide that. And then they determine whatever the case may be. Um, I've had many, many, many of those and I was always, even though I'm an old Marine Corps sergeant, I'm kind of a, a softy. Um, don't tell anybody. Um, but uh, yeah, I've had many that I felt, sorry, this was definitely not your fault. Social Security messed up. You know, the, you, you know you're overpaid a few months, but two years, come on. Um, so I used to give just a really, really low uh, that repayment schedule. And I $10, $50, $100, $200 or something like that. And so it would take, you know, decades to get the recovery of the overpayment um, because I thought that was, you know, in, in that particular case, that was the right thing to do. I still believe in those particular cases I adjudicated, I still believe that was the right thing to do. But what a lot of people don't know, what a lot of Social Security employees don't know is 
they're being nice and they're saying, okay, yeah, you have a $20,000 overpayment, but you've got no money left over. So I am going to set your overpayment at $20 a month. And essentially you'll have to live till you're in the 300 years old to get the for us to get the money back. It's obviously not going to happen. Um, and they leave it at that. But what happens is the, uh, the payment center, the processing center, and they call it different names, the people in the, the, the regional, these processing payment centers, they look at this and they say, you know, $20, are you crazy? No, they deny it. They can deny it. So they say, okay, this person, you know, can pay $500 and they never talk to the person. So they override your determination and it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of unfortunate, but long story short, please, um, you know, make that, uh, appeal and see if you can get that addressed request the reconsideration and let's see what else Anderson has. Let me listen to the rest of this here. Another part of the story, um, they interview one gentleman and he was trying to get his overpayment taken care of. And they talk about, uh, um, you know, he, he tried to get an attorney to help. Um, but I get that call all the time that, uh, Hey, I've got this issue with social security. Um, do you know any attorneys that will take, uh, you know, take on this particular case? And pretty much no. Um, if you are filing for disability, uh, initial disability, I, I did a video on that. And do you need a lawyer for filing disability? And as, as I talk about in that video, I, I say no, uh, for the first stage, initial stage, you don't need a lawyer for the reconsideration stage. You don't need a lawyer when it goes to the ALJ ODAR, uh, OHO, or they keep changing the acronym and office of hearing operations, um, to see the judge, um, I think you should definitely, uh, get a lawyer at that particular time, reach out to me. And, uh, I've, I've seen the work of, you know, hundreds of lawyers throughout the country. I know who does a good job and who kind of just, you know, phones it in against equity and good conscience. There is a, a part of the policy that, uh, they talk about in the story that, um, it, an overpayment can be waived if it's, you know, equity and good conscience. So if you, you look at that overpayment and say, oh yeah, you know, you, you, you Sure, it might be your fault, it might be our fault, whoever's fault, whatever, but you're definitely not able to repay it. Then, as I mentioned, yeah, um, we you know, Social Security employees do have the latitude to waive it. But again, sometimes it goes up to the processing center and they override that decision. So that's definitely a policy that needs to be addressed. In the story, they always mention, uh, also mention um, kind of a statute of limitations that if this overpayment was, you know, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and uh, Social Security didn't catch it in time, then it should be immediately waived. Um, I, I don't know about that. You've got, uh, you know, someone, because uh, I've had this, these cases before, um, that, uh, you know, you, you had someone and they got overpaid, um, you know, they filed early for retirement or something like that, and they just worked. And, you know, a couple of years later for whatever, you know, it was a self-employment or something and they didn't file taxes and, you know, timely. And, and then two years later, it finally pops up and they have a, you know, $40,000 overpayment, but you know, the person is you know now working and making, you know, $600,000 a year. Um, even though it's two years, um, should that be waived? I think there should be kind of, you know, um, uh, still the ability to repay. Um, sure. You know, it's not your fault. You, you know, reported our fault. We took too long, whatever the case may be. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's a discussion, uh, that we need to have. Um, I, you know, it's a case by case basis. So I think statute of limitations for people that, I mean, just, you know, like the people in the story, um, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but across the board, yeah, probably not. And this is how Anderson Cooper can't help everybody um, because at the very end of the story, um, Anderson notes that uh, all of the people, the three people that got overpaid in the story requested Social Security waive their overpayment. They were denied at whatever levels. Again, I recommend going all the way up, but they were denied. And when 60 Minutes and Anderson Cooper asked Social Security about the overpayments of these three individuals, guess what? Social security waived the overpayments. So what about, uh, the, the other, uh, social security, the internal review says there are probably about a million people a year that get overpaid 
from Social Security. So what about the other 999,997? Anderson, get out there and talk to the rest of them. Um, Yeah, that's not going to happen, obviously. Um, So it's important to know the process. Watch my videos. Watch the one on overpayments. Watch this one. I will continue to do more. And uh, I will be doing uh, the SSA 632. I'll show you how to fill that out. I'll show you how to fill out the SSA 561. Um, if you're watching this sometime in the future, it might actually already be up. So please refer to that when you start filling out the 632. And this is going to be an ongoing, you know, updates when the Social Security Administration updates their policy and updates their forms and updates their program, updates their programs, whatever the case may be. I guess I'll just have to go and uh, make another video. So I guess this is my life for the next 20 years. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. It's, uh, it's going to keep, keep me young. Not as young and good looking as Anderson Cooper, but what are you going to do? All right. Um, all right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and share. Um, this is a community, so if this doesn't apply to you. Please, 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 please share with someone that it might apply to and share the channel and all that um and all the stuff in the future we'll put together um please wait for that patiently and uh i will get it done and get it updated on a regular basis have a beautiful day we'll talk to you soon bye-bye